Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, go ahead and hit subscribe before we go any further so you don't forget to later on down the line or before you realize that nothing we produce here is of any value. If this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back. You may want to seek some professional help. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. For today's video, we're going to be looking at Mech Knight True Draco. The intention here is just to go second and try and kill our opponent as quickly as possible. We're not doing any of the traditional shenanigans of floodgates and all that nonsense. The idea here is that we just break boards and kill bitches as quickly as we possibly can. It's definitely more of a fun and casual concept rather than a competitive one. Something that you can definitely have a good laugh with, potentially at locals or the like. Definitely nothing that I would take any further than that. As a quick note, whilst we are here, if you're looking for any Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, or even Pokemon singles for that matter, check out the link in the description to the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. It's a link to their eBay store, and it will net you a nice cheeky discount on there, courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck right in to the video. Let me first apologise if there is any noise in the background, if you hear a bit of a whirring sound, a bit like a fucking jet engine going off, that is my laptop. Unfortunately, these videos do take quite some heavy lifting and uh, the laptop decides to make a load of fucking noise in order to encompass and incorporate that into its routine. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. You're not here to hear about my fucking laptop. Let's get stuck in to the deck profiles. So, we start off with a single copy of Dynamite Knight. Quite frankly, this could be at more than one in my opinion, but whilst it's at one, we'll make use of him. This is going to help search your traps. We have triple copies of Ignis Heat. Again, it's at three. We're going to make use of it. It helps us search those spells. So something that you really need to be able to do. We have double copies of Majesty Maid. Nothing two is perfectly fine. You can go up to three if you so wish. But I think the two does just the trick. We then move on to our Mech Knight package. So we've got two copies of Purple Nightfall, a single Red Moon, a single Indigo Eclipse, and two copies of Blue Sky. This package is kind of flexible. You can increase and go up to three of Blue and Purple. Personally, I feel that two is enough, especially since we're playing Red Moon as well. Uh, and especially with the fact that, of course, we've got Indigo Eclipse in there, which is, you know, a mandatory one-off, at least in my opinion. Being able to summon it, shift to one side, and go about our plays from there. This is the package that is going to allow us to push for additional damage. Combined with our Draco cards, which are going to allow us to destroy a lot of the field and push through our opponent's board as quickly as possible. We have two kind of normal summons, I guess you'd say, if you ignore the fact that Draco is a tribute summons. Uh, two copies of Amano Awata. You could run, uh, what's his name? Inspector Border if you wanted to, but I... I don't think he's necessary for this particular build. I think Nomano Awata does a really good job here. It switches off all your opponent's hand traps, switches off all their monster effects on the board, that kind of thing. There can be a bit of a clash here between this and the Mech Knight card, so do be aware of that before you go about your plays. This is just there as an insurance policy, but you could cut this all together and go down to a 40 card build if you preferred. We then have triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Definitely the most diverse of the hand traps. Really budget friendly now that there's multiple copies out there. So that is something to keep in mind if that is something that tickles your fancy. But again, the most diverse one, you can side it out if you don't need it. But for most decks, this is going to have some use in combating them. Again, it's worth noting that the idea here of the deck is that we're going second. Unfortunately, the deck is still too tight for us to fit in way more hand traps than we're running now. But again, triple Ash Blossom and the triple Impermanence that are coming up later on. But again, triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, pretty much mandatory in most decks, I would say. Unfortunately, Dragonic Diagram is at one, so we are only running one copy, but it's not the only field spell we play. We're also running a single copy of Mystic Mine and a single copy of Necro Valley. So this is the kind of one big floodgate that we are running in here. There are so many decks that rely on the graveyard. Being able to just slap this onto the field will switch off so many. Mystic Mine, if you know you're not going to be able to kill your opponent, can buy a bit of time. It's so easy to out in this deck, but not so easy for your opponent. In fact, there are times where this will be a free win game one. And as long as it's in the game, I'm going to fucking use it. And of course, Dragonic Diagram, arguably the most powerful sort of field spell in the game. Certainly up there in terms of the ones that are legal for us to use. If this was at multiples, of course, we'd be playing multiples and more people would be playing True Draco. And as we're talking about field spells, you've got a single copy of Terraforming, single copy of Set Rotation, pretty self-explanatory, just effectively additional copies of those field spells. We then move on to our Draco spells, three of each 
pretty much mandatory in my opinion. We max out on all the Draco cards that we can. Disciples being able to recycle your resources. Heritage being able to draw cards. Uh, we've got Tree King's Return. We'll go ahead and skip ahead to these. Of course, being able to get you extra bodies on board. Apocalypse being able to half stuff. These destroying monsters. These destroying back row. These cards are going to help us break our opponent's board, which is what Draco does really fucking well. I think sometimes that's forgotten amongst all of the floodgates that we often see that goes along with this deck is that it's a really good deck, especially at being able to be resourceful and break apart what our opponent is doing. Now, looking in between that, we have Part of Extravagance, which I think is a really cool option in this build. Uh, we don't really need the extra deck. It's just kind of there. I mean, you can you can chop up, you can pretty much run whatever you want in the extra deck. Some of these are just there as genuine options, and some of them are just like, you could play this. It doesn't really matter. But we're running the extra deck because we're not running Erupt, so let's get that extra draw power that we need with Extravagance. So triple copies of this, but again, you could swap this out for other stuff. Unfortunately, Demise being at one, uh, and, you know, the other options that are out there just don't seem to be quite as good. But, I mean, at a worst case scenario, you could run Desires if you really wanted to. Running triple copies of Droplet, being able to negate stuff on the field is really important, uh, particularly with this deck. Being able to just switch off your, what your opponent's doing and attack for game. Being able to half their attack points is another way to be able to push through, particularly if they've got something that's quite big and sturdy to try and bust through. And then straight to the end here with Infinite Impermanence, triple copies of this. After Ash Blossom, arguably the most diverse hand trap, being able to switch off back row. You can set it, which can set up your mech knights, and if your opponent does survive, then you've got a way to negate your opponent during their turn, the following turn. And if you're forced to go second, well, if you go second, which is what we're trying to do here, then you can switch off cards. If you do need to go first, then like I say, you can just set it and go about your plays from there. And then on to the extra deck. So a lot of this, again, isn't mandatory. These are just ideas of what you could run. So we've got uh, AA Zeus here. I've got two copies of this in here because we're running Extravagance. So hence the multiples of many of these. Uh, we'll just quickly rectify this so it makes a little bit more sense there. We have two copies of Freezer on here. Uh, again, it's just another option that you can uh, go into. And again, it can help you rank up into your Crystal Zero Lancer, which we'll get to in a moment. Because you've got these Volcasaurus here, being able to burn for damage is always quite nice, particularly in late game if you do get in into a grind game. If your opponent gets too defensive, we've got the likes of Thunder Charger as an option. Uh, Crystal Zero for the same sort of thing, just pushing for big damage. There's also the fact that it switches off effects, which is always quite nice. We've got Doom Chimera, just again for being able to push for multiple attacks. It doesn't come up very often, but again, it's just an idea. We've got some rank 8s here as well, because we can make them with our Mech Knight. So we've got two copies of Dingirsu, just an option for board removal, so what's not to like. Again, we can make rank 8s here, so we've got Dingirsu in there, because what's not to like about this card? It just helps you break those boards, adds protection if you need to do so. We've got a guy on the Seed Castrum here, just an option for being able to remove... Parts from your opponent's extra deck is really, really important, especially if your opponent is playing a combo-centric deck. Uh, a lot of decks that this will punish, and of course, being able to pop cards in the field is always quite nice. And then our final option here, this is effectively a pseudo-abyss dweller. Being able to switch off your opponent's graveyard effects is really nice, and Sanofon allows us to do just that. It also becomes fucking massive, especially late game. It can really be a really good way to get rid of your opponent's cards and just kill them off completely. And that is all for today's video. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far, hopefully you've enjoyed it enough or hated it enough to at least hit subscribe. This is not the only kind of content we do on the channel, although we are doing a slew of deck profiles at the moment. We do do combo tutorials, how to play videos, all that good stuff. If there's anything you'd like to see, definitely reach out and let me know. If you've got any decks you'd like to showcase, definitely let me know as well. I'm easy enough to find out there on social media. You can find links in the description to that as well. Again, thank you very much for coming along, guys. I do really appreciate you being here, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.